Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review. And to conclude my Marines theme month, I'll be taking a look at the second version of Sergeant Slaughter and the 1986 Tag Team Terminator, better known as the Triple T Vehicle. Now, unlike the first version, which was a mail away exclusive, which did not appear in either cartoon or comic form, this version did appear in the Marvel Comics run in issue 48. Unfortunately, the Triple T vehicle did not make any comic book appearances. However, this version, both the figure and the vehicle, did make their appearance in the 1986 five-part miniseries season opener, Arise Serpenter Arise, in the very first part. Now, even though the figure basically a driver, uh, did not, uh, was not available afterwards. Uh, sometimes driver vehicle, uh, driver figures were available uh, through mail order, but this version was never available uh, after that. The mail away version, the first version, was still continually available uh, for a very long time. However, the vehicle was available in the very early 90s, however, all of the plastic parts were changed to orange. A very interesting variation which some collectors do find very appealing. This second version of Sergeant Slaughter, better known to collectors as the Triple T Sergeant Slaughter, has a much nicer subdued military look versus how the first version looked. Despite the fact that this version is basically a 50% repaint of the first version. Now, this version does come with a brand new waist and leg sculpt, but he is reusing the same head and arms and the bulky stretched torso, which really gives both Sergeant Slaughter's their height. And speaking of height, here's a three and three quarter inch leather neck to compare to, and he is, for the most part, actually a very tall figure because of the extra height that his tall field hat gives him. But as you can see side by side, Sergeant Sar still towers over him at the four inch range. Now Sergeant Slaughter comes with the same accessory that the first version came with, a marching stick or baton. A very easy to lose piece, sometimes even easy to forget seeing as he is a vehicle driver this time and one of the things is that it still doesn't mention his being a marine on his file card it's actually a different text that's on this new file card but it still doesn't mention anything like that as a matter of fact it barely mentions that he is a vehicle driver here as it's not in his title it's just buried in the text that he drives a tank now, it, he is born on Paris Island, which is the uh, big marine training base, and it does mention Pendleton, but if you look carefully on his campaign hat, on the official artwork, there is the marine uh, logo, which is missing from the figure because the figure only had that on his waist, and that was removed when the unique waist was sculpted. Sergeant Slaughter comes with his Triple T vehicle, which is where he gets his nickname. The vehicle is a tracked vehicle, which has quite a high stance. And it is by no means a tank, and unfortunately, a lot of collectors don't like it because of those odd proportions. Now, it's a simple vehicle, but it comes with two rockets on either side. two cannons which can pivot and swivel a removable engine cover which shows engine detail and the engine bay itself now a lot of people have asked whether this um, this pip on the top here is an antenna or whether it's an attachment point for something like um, the black wire which attaches to uh, 
figure backpacks and accessories but this pip is unfortunately too thick for that so it is just an antenna detail unfortunately the vehicle also comes with two foot pegs so you can attach two extra figures to carry along on this vehicle and the big fake treads cover up the wheels underneath so you can roll along rather nicely one um, one word of warning however is if you're looking for one on the aftermarket make sure it still has this joystick attached to the front here it's fairly easy to crack off and of course very small so it's a little hard to see in photographs sometimes now well I mentioned that a lot of collectors don't really like the proportions of this vehicle to me it really reminds me of many track vehicles which are used as um, towing vehicles and of course it has a very nice tow hook and it looks very nice towing some nice weapon accessories like the MMS for instance of course uh, a, a lot of people a lot of collectors they sometimes don't really like the sergeant slaughter character uh, they think that he doesn't really belong in the gi joe universe at all but that's exactly one of the reasons why i like him so much he is loud and brash and to me he exemplifies everything that i think of in a drill sergeant especially a top drill sergeant the fact of the matter is, is that uh, Duke, who is the first sergeant or top sergeant, is really meant to, to be that character. And he sort of is when he's introduced in the comic books, but he isn't, believe it or not, he doesn't seem to be really used all that much in that, in that specific role. And to me, in the cartoons, he's, he really feels more like an officer. He's he's just too refined, whereas to me, you really have to be loud and obnoxious to be a drill sergeant, and Sergeant Slaughter really fills that bill quite a bit better. Not to say that I don't like Duke, it's just that, well, Duke is just officer material. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind-the-scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.